Hi everybody and thanks for joining me again in the studio. It's good to see you all here. Um, I've been working on this painting here for the last few days. In fact, you might have seen me working on the trees here in a previous video. But now I'm starting to work on the water. So I thought this would be a good time to show you exactly how I do um, that choppy water. Um, it looks complicated, but it's not as difficult as you might think. Uh, and I'm gonna get into that now, showing you how I do it. Um, <clears throat> I just will mention that um, apart from the paints, all of the other products I'm using in this lesson, so the panel and the brushes are available on my website. Um, so go and check that out. Um, well, I guess we better get started then. Let's go. So as with all my paintings, I tend to work in the background and then work forward. And we're gonna do the same with this um, painting here. So we're gonna be working in the distance here to begin with. Um, and then we're going to be working downwards. So we're going to get the water line in place, get that approximately right, and then work down. But there's quite a lot. There's a, it's a quite a long process. So what I tend to do first of all is I have um, uh, more of a, sort of a downward brush stroke to begin with. Now, as I said, the water does have ripples. It has a certain choppy nature to it. So we will then have to put in some horizontal brush marks as well. There is um, also a lot of um, sort of grass or reeds and things in the water, but we're going to do that near the end. Let's just work to begin with in the distance. We're going to mimic roughly the colors that we can see in what we're reflecting. So in this case, in the trees above. So to begin with going right up to the waterline I'm using this is the series 7 size 8 once again that's available um, available in my store online www.michaeljamesmith.com or shopmichaeljamesmith.com um, go there and have a look you'll be able to purchase the exact same brush that I'm using there so just trying to kind of smooth this area a little bit as we start to move nearer to the front of the painting, we do tend to have less of that vertical and more of the horizontal brush strokes, with exception probably to the area right by the waterline. So I'm going to continue to add these vertical marks. Okay, now moving over to the coma brush. This is a brilliant brush for this sort of thing, as you can see. It's called a comb because we do have the um, brush is cut in such a way that we have all these lots of little, you know, lots of little, um, almost like each one is a almost like a rigger brush. If you look at the look at the rigger brush, each one it's like you've got, you know, five five uh, rigger brushes for the price of one here. Now we're going to use this to add some more detailing into the water. So as we start moving down in the painting, um, we do get more of a horizontal and actually sort of nearer the front here, um, the details that we can see, we can almost see, well, in fact we can see some of the river bed there as well. So I'm going to now start introducing some of the horizontal marks. I'm also now moving back to the series 7 size 8. Thank you. 
and then back to the series 5 size 3 8 again I'm going to continue with the horizontal lines but we need them now to be a bit finer So we're at the stage now where we've done the groundwork. What we're going to do is start adding some of the tree reflections into the blue. Once we've done that, we'll then add some of the blue into the tree reflections. Um, and we're going to use the rigger brush. This is the series one. This is the size zero. It's a brilliant brush for doing fine, individual fine lines. In fact, there's nothing quite like it. Um, so I recommend using that brush if you are working on the ripples of a painting. So as I say, I'm going to mix now this darker colour to start bringing it into the blue here. Now bearing in mind that the blue here is still in the blocking stage, so it's relatively dry. goes without saying that we want to keep these ripples pretty much as horizontal as we can. Okay, so you can see now that we've started adding these details in the reflections of the trees, bringing them over to the, you know, the water. We're now going to bring some of the sky reflection over the trees. Same principle, same brush, series one. I'm using the size zero. There are different sizes. This is the smallest size. So in this area here, you can see in my painting the riverbed, but I'm going to add some blue reflections over the top. I still need to be able to see this. I'm not going to cover it with a paint that is too opaque. So all I'm going to do is add the Galkid medium to the paint so it's very much washed down. And then I'm going to add that over the top. And I'm using for that, this is the Series 6 size zero.